Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. This video is a first look at the new Theme Builder functionality just added to JetTheme Core. JetTheme Core is Crocoblock's template and Theme Builder plugin. It used to only work with Elementor and required their Kava theme, but they recently released a big update and it now also works with Gutenberg and with popular page builder friendly themes. The messaging around the new Theme Builder has been unclear and even support was not sure about it. So we'll first take a tour and test the options so that you know how it works. We'll then use Crocoblock's Jet Engine that already works with Gutenberg to create a custom post type and add some custom fields to it. Finally, we'll use the new theme builder together with the block editor to create single and archive templates. So I have a test site here and you can see I've got some demo post data. Let's go take a look at the themes. Right now I have the free cadence theme activated. I also have Astra installed, Generate Press installed, and the Crocoblock Kava theme installed. If we take a look at the plugins, I've got Jet Theme Core, the new version, installed and activated, and we'll use its new theme builder functionality. And I also have Jet Engine installed and activated. Jet Engine is a Crocoblock plugin for creating custom post types, custom fields, and for creating archive listings. I also have the Free Cadence Blocks plugin installed. I'm using just the row layout block from this. I've also got WP Reset Pro installed, and I use that to reset the site between testing cycles. So let's begin and do a quick look at the admin menus for Jet Engine. You'll see that there are some modules here that you can enable, and these are our advanced features. Like you see, there's a profile builder. If you click for more information, it tells you if it works with Elementor or Gutenberg or both. Often there's a video help guide. So we aren't using any of these, but you can see that it has quite a few advanced features like custom content types. Okay, and there are also some additional modules that you can install. There's a skins manager for importing and exporting skins. There's a short code generator. And there's a glossary feature. These are like archives or loop listings. The way this works with Jet Engine is you use this listings area and you create a single item of the loop. Okay, and we'll actually be doing this, so we'll come back to it. Post types, this is where you create post types and we'll be creating a custom post type. Meta boxes for adding those into different posts and post types. Taxonomies, and we'll create a taxonomy. Relationships between post types. Option pages, if you wanna create an option page in the admin. And there's even a pretty sophisticated query builder we're not gonna use it here, but I just think it's cool and I just wanna show you a quick look at it here. You can give it a name, you select which type of query, add an ID, and then you can select the post type, the status of the post that you're querying, a keyword, you can add sorting and order parameters, whether or not it has a password. You can see that it's pretty sophisticated. Okay, so Jet Engine is a pretty powerful plugin. Now, the next thing is when you install any Crocoblock plugin, you get this area here that includes a dashboard. These are the plugins I have installed. There's information. You can install more, that you're added my license. You can check for updates. They've got some ads here, some links to help. Here are some settings and the Kava theme comes with Jet Theme Core. The magic button templates, these are your Elementor templates. And then these are settings for setting the priority of templates if you're working with Elementor. This is where you would install additional plugins if you needed to. And now you'll see there's something Theme Builder. This is the new thing and we're gonna be using it. But there's also theme templates. And you can see under theme templates, it mentions single and archive and other types of templates. And so it could be confusing to figure out which of these you use, theme builder or theme templates. 
And this is where I got mixed messages from the CrocoBlock team because they hadn't actually put out the documentation yet. Okay, so we're going to do some experimentation here and I'm going to show you how these work. Then there's also the place where you enter your license and I've already done that. All right, so let's actually start here with theme templates. You can see there's no single template yet. We're going to add new and it's going to be a single. I don't have Elementor installed, but if we do, we it would be in the option here and we'll give it a name. Single post template. Okay, I don't have a custom post type yet. Okay, so we go in here. I'm not going to go through everything to create the template. This is just an experiment to show you what works and how it works. Okay, so here's the featured image. This is the core featured image block. And I'll add a paragraph block and we'll just say Croco block experiment. Just so we know what we're looking at. Now I'm going to update this. Now let's go back to the theme templates. You see it here. There are no conditions yet. We haven't set a condition. It shows the Gutenberg icon there and you know the type of template it is. Look under theme builder. Nothing here yet. Okay. All right. Now let's add a condition. And what we want is we want it for single archive or advanced. Now advanced is interesting because you can set it to work with a URL parameter different device sizes or user role. So that's kind of cool. But right now we're just going singular and we want it for posts. And you can set it for individual posts if you want to, but we're just going to go for singular post. Okay, so that's saved. Now let's go to the front end. Here's a post. And we don't see our message or the featured image here. What we see is this is the default cadence theme single post template. So it didn't work. Let's go to themes and I'm just going to save time and tell you that it doesn't work in Astra. It doesn't work in generate press, but if we go to Kava theme and activate it and now go to the front end and go to a post, you can see here it is. Okay and it's added it to the post template. It hasn't replaced it. That's not that exciting. Let's go back and let's go to the theme templates. Let's trash this now. All right, now let's go to the theme builder and we're going to create a new template and we add the condition we want it for single posts. You know, this looks the same as the other, but trust me, it's separate. Okay, we could select a post, but we're going to go for all posts. I'm just going to name this. Whereas this one added to the theme template for Kava, the theme builder actually replaces the parts of the theme. And you can have a different header or footer. So you might want a different header, say, for landing pages or something. I don't know. All right. So we're going to now add a body. We're going to create the template. Again, we don't have Elementor, so it's just block editor. We'll give it a name. And again, we are just experimenting here. I'm not going to create the full-on template. Okay. Let's add a featured image. And now let's add a paragraph and this is, you know, Croco block experiment two. Okay. I'm now going to update this and let's go and look at our theme builder. Okay. Here it is. And it tells what the condition is. Now here's where it can get weird is it also shows up here, but it says conditions not set. So if you actually make one with a theme builder, you're going to need to delete it in both places. So anyway, let's go to the front end. And remember, we're still with a Kava theme now. So let's take a look. Here is the featured image and here is our note. And so what you can see is this replaced the default template that was here with Kava. Okay, now let's go to themes. Let's activate cadence. Go back to the front end. 
So you see the theme builder works. It replaced it here. Let's go try Astra. All right, Astra worked. Let's go try Generate Press. Generate Press, it worked. Let's go back to Themes. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to be using Cadence. But I wanted to show you the difference between this theme builder and theme templates. Okay, so this will work with Kava and it's additive with Gutenberg. This actually replaces. And we're going to be using the theme builder from now on. I'm going to get rid of this, get rid of that experiment. And now we're going to delete it here as well. All right, so that was the experiment portion to see how this works. Okay, now let's create our custom post type. So I go Jet Engine Post Types. We do Add New. So this is going to be Books, Post Type Slug. We'll say Book. Then there are a bunch of labels here, which we can just go with the defaults. Their advanced settings, is it public? Yes, we don't want to exclude it from search. It's publicly queryable. Show it in the admin UI, show in the admin menu, show in the nav menu, show in REST API, which you need for Gutenberg. Register a query variable, rewrite options, special slug, which we don't need, rewrite with the front, which we don't need. Capability type, you have post or page, and we'll go with post has archive, it's not hierarchical like pages, menu position we'll say 25, and menu icon, let's see if we can find one for a book. Here we go. Okay, then supports, these are the features in the editor that you wanna have, it's got title, editor, we want, say, comments, revisions, uh, excerpt, author, featured image. So then we can now add our fields next. So let's add a couple of custom fields. This one will be author's website. And I'll remove this special character there. You have the option of field, tab, accordion, or endpoint. This will be a URL field. CrocoBlock doesn't have URL as a type, so we'll go with text. Description, link to the author's website. Field width, we'll say 50%. No character limit, no default value, not required. You can add quick edit support if you want, but we don't need that. Now let's add a second field. This one will be called author's photo. Again, I'll remove the special character. And they say in terms of special characters, dash or underscore only, and the rest just letters. Object type, field. Okay, and so we want this to be media. And we'll have it go to media URL, that looks good. So this will be author's photo. And we'll make this 50% also, and we'll save. Okay, and here it is. Let's take a quick look at it. Here's the title, the content. We have featured image, excerpt, discussion. Here's a place for a link to the author's website. And here's the author's photo. Okay, that looks good. Let's go back now and go to taxonomies. And let's create a taxonomy for this. We'll call it genres and genre, and we're going to add it to books. Don't need to change the labels. Let's take a look at the settings. These look kind of similar. I don't want it to be hierarchical, and I don't need to add a field to the taxonomy. So let's add that. And here are genres. All right, now let's go and add a record. Hey, and I'm just going to copy some records over here to enter them. Author's website link, and we'll choose the media. I'll upload the file. I have a picture of the author there. 
Okay, and now over here, we will add the featured image. Okay, and then we'll add our genre. Okay, so there's our first record. Sometimes you need, I'm not gonna go ahead and enter an excerpt now, but depending on the theme, you might need to manually create an excerpt, so that's why I added that. All right, let's publish it. And let's go view it. You know, none of the data is showing here. So, you know, we don't have the featured image or the genre or our custom field showing. So we are gonna need to do some theming. But before we go too far, let's go to menus. And I've created a menu here for home, books, which you can see goes to book, and the sample page. So let's just assign that menu, make our life easier here. Okay, and if we look at the archive, that's, this is what the default archive looks like. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video and I'll add more book records. Okay, so I've added some book records and now I think we're ready to go on to creating the templates, the theme templates, the single and archive templates. So I'm going to Theme Builder, create Add New, we'll add our condition. This will be single for CPT, custom post type, and that'll be books. Okay, so I'm going to create, and I'll change the name here. Okay, and it has the condition there. All right, so now I'm going to add the body. It's a block editor, give it a name here again. And let's go to Gutenberg. I told you that we were going to add the free cadence blocks for the sake of the row layout block. Let me show you why that is. Let's just add columns. This is just going to be a quick thing just to kind of show you why we would do that. Go dynamic field title. All right, I'm just going to update this. And if we go to the front end, go to books. Here's the image and here's the title. But what I wanted to show you is that it's not centered. Okay, it takes up the full width. So I'm using the row layout block so that I can set the width to match what we have here with the header. Okay, so I'm just gonna go here and delete that stuff out. But that's why I was doing that. So I'm going to add row layout and we'll use this type of thing here. We'll move this to be 25%. Let's actually look at the blocks here. These are the blocks that come with CrocoBlock Jet Engine, Dynamic Field, Dynamic Image, Dynamic Repeater, Dynamic Meta, Dynamic Link, Dynamic Terms, and Listing Grid. So we're going to use a few of these, but these are the ones that come with CrocoBlock Jet Engine. Here, let's try adding the Dynamic Image. Let's see how that works. So we want the post thumbnail doesn't need to be a linked image. What we see is we don't see. <laughs> we don't see the post thumbnail. We're in kind of this editor environment and it's not showing there. Now let's go ahead and add a dynamic field. Okay, and we want the title and we want it to be in each one. Okay, I'm just going to update. Let's go back to the front end and refresh this. So you notice that we're still full width. We do see the image here, which is nice, but we don't see it in the editor. So that's a rough spot here in the editor. And so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go to row layout and it has a structure settings and I'm going to set the content width to be 1290 because I know that's the default for cadence. Okay, and then I'm going to go here. We can use their dynamic thing, but Core gives us a post featured image. So we'll use that. And now let's continue on here. Let's add the next field here is 
let's use that dynamic meta. And here we can enable the date. We can select an icon, but this takes you to the media library. So there's not an icon collection integrated with this. So you'd have to upload your icons here. We'll do published on, okay. And then for a suffix, we'll just add a divider there. Okay. And then we'll do published by David McCann or David. And we'll add a divider there. And then if you want comments, we would say comments. So I actually really like theme builders that give you some help with the post meta. It can be kind of a pain to build this up using columns and whatnot. So that's nice. You have an option for whether you want inline or list. All right, now let's go to dynamic field. And now we want the content. It's going to be multi-line. Okay, it's not showing in here, which is too bad. So it'd be nice if they had an option to set the preview or it picked up from the theme builder what the preview is. Okay, but anyway, let's set this for a line center. And then under that, let's add a dynamic image. And this will not be post thumbnail. This will be the author's photo. It's not a linked image. And let's go to the section. Let's align the center. Now let's add the dynamic link. Okay, it's not the permalink. This is the author's website. Change the text and open in a new window. Then below that, we will add the dynamic terms for the genre from genres. Okay, let's save this and go now to the front end. Go to books and let's take a look at one. All right, this is looking pretty good. We've got all the content there. This, I guess, could be centered. Let's see if we can center that's the author's photo and the link to the author's website. Uh, let's try adding a section and see if that will do it. And we'll put this image into the section and the link into the section. Come on. Now in the section, we'll try going center horizontal. Let's see if that's gonna work. Go back and refresh. Great, Let's see if this works. It does. Good. Okay, so now let's go do the archive for books. And with Jet Engine, we're going to do a listing. And the way that works is we start out and we do a single record for the loop. So I'll add a new one. It is going to be posts, books, book, listing, item. And we're going to use Gutenberg. Okay, and so here we're going to add our row layout. And here we'll add our featured image. And here we will add our post title. And under that, we'll add our dynamic field. Instead of title, we'll have it be the excerpt. And we'll use an automatically generated excerpt. And we'll set the length to, let's say, 100. See how that looks? No, we need to go smaller, 50. And then below that, let's add the dynamic link. And this will be the permalink. And we'll say, read more. Let's go now to the theme builder and we'll now add one for archive, CPT archive, books. Okay, and we'll create the body. Okay, and now we'll add 
Let's try a section. It's a cadence container. And now let's try the list. Listing grid. Okay, and so we want the bulk list item. Notice how it shows like that. It's not the way we had it set. We'll want one column. Okay, we want to publish and use custom post types. Books. Okay, let's see what this is going to end up looking like. Let's go to the front end. Go books. All right, so that needs some work there. Let's go back to the section. And Cadence lets us set the max width. So we'll set that 1290. Update. Refresh. OK, so that's looking better. I guess we need to either make the excerpt longer or the image shorter. So we need to go to the listing item, I think, to adjust that. So this is a little trial and error because we're not seeing exactly what we want to see there in the front, you know, when we're in the editor. So here we have height width and let's make the height 220 and the width 180. Let's just update that and let's go to the front end, go to books. Need to adjust that. The width and height isn't quite right. Let's go and make the height a little bit taller and the width a little narrower. Save that and refresh. And good, okay, so there's our archive and there's our single. This is our look now at creating the single and archive template. Now let's have a little bit of discussion and some conclusions. The Crocoblox suite has been a long-standing top-tier add-on for Elementor. It's good that they are gradually adding support for Gutenberg. There are a number of previous Elementor users who are looking for other solutions, and they will find Crocoblox for Gutenberg interesting. There could easily be some confusion about whether to use the Theme Templates area or the Theme Builder area. We walked through that and we saw that the new Theme Builder is the best option, and I was able to create the single and archive templates using it. For the most part, it worked well. The main issue was the inability to preview the content while creating the templates. This meant that we had to resort to some trial and error to get the layout and sizing correct. A good container block would also have been helpful. While the new theme builder for Gutenberg is usable, it is just the first version. It would be nice to see the shortcomings addressed. Typically, the Crocoblock team follows up the initial release with additional features and polish, so I'm expecting this to turn into a strong option for Gutenberg users. So that's my first look at the new theme builder for Gutenberg included in JetTheme Core. There's a text summary of the video available on the WebTNG website, along with other walkthroughs, reviews, and resources. I hope you found the video useful. Thank you for watching.